Hey guys, Tyler here. For decades, the Star Trek franchise, in addition to exploring various sectors of our Milky Way galaxy, has occasionally given us glimpses of parallel universes and alternate timelines. This is a tradition that dates back to the original series and has only become more prevalent since the 2009 Star Trek movie. However, one of the most frequently, actually the most frequently visited parallel universes in Star Trek is the so-called Mirror Universe. First seen in the original series episode, Mirror Mirror, this alternate reality's inhabitants possess more fascistic tendencies, uh, at least among humans. With cooperation, freedom, and equality being viewed as dangerous fantasies that mirror humans, Terrans, abandoned millennia ago. The Terran Empire acts as a brutal counterpart to the United Federation of Planets. Imperial Starfleet officers are seen performing a sort of Roman salute, and much of the Empire's iconography is borrowed from the mythologized Roman tradition. While this initial outing cranked the campiness of the original series up to 11, later installments seem to take the Mirror Universe more seriously, for better or worse. In episodes of Deep Space Nine, uh, we see a few crossovers to the Mirror Universe a hundred years later, where the Terran Empire has fallen to the klingon cardassian Alliance, inspiring a Terran Rebellion. With Enterprise and Discovery adding even more information to the lore of the Mirror Universe, whose history is intricately intertwined with that of the Prime Universe, many have attempted to pinpoint a divergence between the two universes' histories. One of the reasons for this is to figure out exactly where in the development of human civilization things went wrong and Earth decided to go the route of conquest rather than peaceful exploration. I made a video years ago detailing uh, an alternate history theory of mine regarding the uh, Mirror Universe's origins, but with the recent additions and discovery, I thought that it would be appropriate to explore more alternative ideas in this vein. In this video, I'll dive into the science used to justify the Mirror Universe's mere existence, dispelling myths along the way using evidence from canon and other sources. With that, let's get started. The explanation given in Mirror Mirror for the uh, mechanism of travel to the Mirror Universe involves a transporter accident during an ion storm. This ionic activity is the same type of phenomenon that preceded the arrival of the Narada through a red matter singularity in the beginning of the 2009 Star Trek film. But specifically in regards to the Mirror Universe itself, its relationship with the Prime Universe uh, is further explored in the Enterprise episode In a Mirror Darkly, in which the ISS Enterprise NX-01 crew uh, retrieves the USS Defiant from Tholian space. The Defiant has been pulled through an interphase rift from 2268 of the Prime Universe, as seen in the original series episode The Tholian Web. Access to Defiant technology in the 22nd century gives Imperial Starfleet a leg up to uh, accelerate their conquest of much of known space by the 23rd century. All right, now, that may have sounded a little confusing given all of the time travel shenanigans and universe crossing involved, but just know this. Access to more advanced technology, again, allows Terrans to accelerate their takeover of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. Anyway, this other, more dangerous method of crossing via a special interphase tells us a little more about the relationship between the two realities. They mirror each other, naturally, uh, even across centuries and down to the scale of individual people and ships having counterparts in both timelines. The universes are parallel and they sync periodically, often during times of intense conflict uh, and preceding major alterations to the trajectory of both timelines. All of this is to say the mirror universe is not uh, just some random quantum reality with a huge number of coincidences. No, the prime and mirror universes share a special link, seemingly as the moral antitheses of each other. Discovery deepens this connection uh, by explaining that the mycelial network. The mycelial network. Like My serial network acts as a sort of highway connecting various parts of the multiverse. And on top of this, the Prime and Mirror Universe's relative closeness to each other uh, is 
tenuous and the connection can be severed. In fact, as we learn in season three, after the last crossing circa the 27th century, both universes have been drifting apart. Of course, the plausibility of any of this in real scientific terms is rather dubious. We hear terms like interphase and multiverse thrown around quite a bit, but what does modern physics actually tell us about the possibility of space beyond our observable universe? Well, as you can probably imagine, there are several mathematical theories that attempt to uncover the true nature of reality. One of the most well-known of these is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which posits that all possible outcomes of an event manifest in different parallel universes. Developed by physicist Hugh Everett, the many worlds interpretation is uh, intended to serve as a resolution to the so-called wave function collapse. In the Copenhagen interpretation, uh, all outcomes of any given event exist in a superposition until one is observed, and this superposition, or wave function, ceases to exist. This gives rise to paradoxes such as Schrodinger's cat. Is the cat alive or dead? Both, until it's not. But how can this be? Well, the many worlds hypothesis uh, attempts to address this by stating that each universe has its own unique wave function, and theoretically there could be an infinite number of such universes. This theory is given stock in Star Trek, uh, not only with the Next Generation episode Parallels, but also with characters waxing poetic about the infinite possible realities, a set that also includes the Mirror Universe, despite its unique attributes. Given that there are different types of infinity, it should still be noted that uh, this doesn't mean that all possible universes actually exist, just that there are an infinite number of variations on our 40 familiar space-time. But where do all of these alternate realities actually physically exist relative to each other? Well, although the mycelial network... The mycelial network... Like Mycelial network does sort of provide a connective tissue uh, between the different universes, including the prime and mirror universes. As far as the geometry or the geography of the multiverse, no one really knows, not even Star Trek. There are, again, many mathematical theories that attempt to answer how different permutations permutations, permutations of space-time interact with each other. One of these models is string theory, a framework of quantum field theory that posits that particles are actually made up of tiny strings, one-dimensional strings, that vibrate at different frequencies. String theory comes in many forms, all of which try to describe the four fundamental forces using quantum mechanics and abstract mathematics. In this way, string theory is referred to as a theory of everything, though disagreements exist on how much emphasis to put on certain elements like supersymmetry, which creates theoretical pairs of particles in order to explain cosmic inflation. Between this and the fact that, well, it's very hard to test or prove any of this uh, with our current technology, no theory of everything has been declared. It is one of the big unsolved problems in physics. Anyway, string theory posits the existence of multiple spatial dimensions beyond our lowly three. Variations of the theory suppose that there are up to 10, 11, even 12 different dimensions of space, many of which are compacted inside other dimensions at scales smaller than the Planck length or 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. This compactification would be uh, of particular interest at the centers of black holes, for example, since Einstein's theory of general relativity cannot fully adequately explain such regions. An alternative model is the so-called brain world scenario, in which different dimensions are stacked on top of each other. In this model, R4D space-time exists on a membrane floating through uh, what is called a bulk, and other membranes can float by us and sometimes collide, causing big bangs. Gravity would arise from strings propagating through this multidimensional bulk and intersecting our reality at a particular orientation, explaining why gravity is weaker than the other three fundamental forces. The prime and mirror universes could thus exist on brains floating within a multidimensional bulk. As for interface space, it could arise from uh, a 
supersymmetric field that is quantum entangled in both realities, or alternatively, an analogous particle field that periodically phase shifts such that the barrier between the universes is thinner. Other models would suggest that the two universes might be cyclical repetitions of the same reality, with different choices being made in each timeline or they could exist in pockets of the same infinitely large inflationary universe. But I don't like either of these explanations as much as the possibilities that string theory offers, given the fact that so many Star Trek characters have doppelgangers in the other universe. What could be possibly causing uh, these similarities to manifest? We know that the two universes are linked via the mycelial network. The mycelial network. Like Mycelial network and intersected interface space, uh, but that doesn't seem like enough. There could be something else going on. It's quite tempting to say that the mirror universe is some weird twisted experiment by Q or another intelligent powerful being. Perhaps it's part of his trial for humanity to test the limits of our barbarism. Or perhaps the prime universe is the real experiment, with the Q trying to set us on a brighter path towards bettering ourselves. Of course, you could stretch this to its logical conclusion and say that all of the Star Trek universes are intelligently designed by creative forces, which, while obviously true in the real world sense, uh, is not as satisfying from an in-universe perspective. Obviously, we know that Q can create illusions, uh, such as in well, just any, any episode that he's in, basically. Um, but as we learn in Voyager, the Q continuum is culturally stagnant. Uh, so if they were busy creating simulations of infinite possible realities, uh, they'd probably never get bored. Instead, what we see is that they have done everything they believe they are capable or know they are capable of doing. I traveled the road many times, sat on the porch, played the games, been the dog, everything. I was even the Scarecrow for a while. Oh, we've all done the Scarecrow. Big deal. And though the Q are definitely aware of possible futures, they can still be surprised, uh, as we see on multiple occasions. They're not truly omnipotent. But enough about the Q. There could be yet another powerful force at work. In fact, while Gene Roddenberry's only involvement with the Mirror Universe was a rewrite of the Mirror Mirror script, he did have some interesting ideas uh, that pertain to the relationship between different manifestations of space-time. One of these ideas has to do with the Traveler, a mysterious being who the Enterprise encounters in the 2360s. The Traveler, whose species is unnamed, uh, is capable of altering space, time, and even warp fields at his will, and uh, according to himself, does not come from the Prime Universe. He demonstrates his powerful abilities by whisking away the Enterprise D to the Triangulum Galaxy and later to the end of the universe, whatever that means. Uh, but at this end of the universe, as depicted, thought and matter become one and the same. That's right, we're getting into some Doctor Strange territory. The universe is, in fact, powered by thought, according to the Traveler. This is actually what Gene Roddenberry believed that the universe is more than what we can observe in our little bubble of space-time. We do know that in the Star Trek universe, thought can be powerful. And so, perhaps the mirror universe is powered by the thoughts of its inhabitants. It's possible, then, that every universe has its own mirror reality. And in fact, we see that the Kelvin timeline has its own mirror universe in an IDW comics line. However, I don't think that this is essential, as it arguably cheapens the uh, impact of the main mirror universe to the extent that its sheer campiness doesn't already. Besides the special link that uh, the two universes share, what about the point where their histories diverged? That's a question I'll attempt to answer in a future Star Trek video. In the meantime, I'll have another Alien Species video coming out in September. And until then, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a member or a patron is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and my merch store, are also in the description. That's about all I have for this week. I'll see you next time.